Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be talking about rabies, snake bites, and venomous insect stings. First off, if you get bitten by an animal with rabies or a venomous snake, it is critical that you get to a hospital because rabies and snake bites are very serious and life-threatening conditions. But if you're in a societal collapse situation or unable to get to a doctor, there are things that you can do. Before we begin this topic, I wanted to tell you that in a societal collapse scenario, rabies will spread like wildfire amongst animals for quite some time before this condition stabilizes in the animal population. Therefore, the risk of being bitten by a rabid animal is strong in a societal collapse scenario. I wanted to do this video because there's nothing worse to endure than to have a loved one in a health emergency and the feeling of helplessness that you experience because you don't know what to do to help your loved one. Many people would rather face a charging grizzly bear than to endure this type of a scenario. This is the reason for this video. Before we get into this topic, I wanted to talk about basic bedside manner first. When a loved one has a health emergency, no matter what the cause, you will feel intensely afraid, but you cannot show this fear to your sick loved one. If there was ever a time for you to be strong, this is it. You absolutely must put your personal feelings aside and be strong. What it means to be strong in this type of scenario is to have an air of someone that knows what to do. You need to inspire confidence in your loved one. You need to establish a calm and authoritative yet loving and caring ambience, no matter what you're truly feeling. This simple act will do wonders for your loved one and will do much to alleviate your loved one's fears. Nothing is worse than the fear that surrounds this type of a situation, and this is the way through it. Even if your legs are shaking so badly that they threaten to give way, even if your hands are shaking so badly from fear and you feel like throwing up from it all, you must hide this and present a calm presence. This is number one on the list of things that are needed the most by all parties concerned. Remember that it isn't about you. You can't share your feelings with your loved one. You have to keep it to yourself or else your loved one will have to extend energy that they don't have in trying to keep you calm. So remember to pull yourself together as this is your number one job. Having said all of this, there are some things that you can do to help your loved one. Remember that nothing works as well as the rabies and anti-venom shots delivered by a doctor. But if this is not possible, here are things that you can do. First off, let's explore the symptoms of rabies. The early symptoms are restlessness, depression, loss of sleep, and a sense of tightness around the throat area. Shortly after this, the patient begins to have difficulty swallowing. Rabies patients can't stand the sight or thought of water, and yet there's a great thirst, but they can't swallow. Soon after this, the violent symptoms develop. These include convulsions, struggling to breathe, and strangling on the saliva. Before the days of rabies and anti-venom shots, People used to treat rabies and snake bites and serious insects things themselves, and in many cases their treatments worked. So there's hope here. These are the old techniques that I'm presenting here. In all cases, speed is of the essence. Immediately after being bitten, tie a tight bandage above the wound, not a tourniquet, a tight bandage. And wash rinse the wound with warm water and vinegar don't scrub it just you know get it clean let it dry then apply a few drops of either hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid muriatic acid is the type of acid used to shock pools it's readily available this will neutralize and destroy the poison of the saliva from the rabbit animals mouth 
One of the best, mes best methods of dealing with rabies is to have a hot sauna, 140 degrees Fahrenheit at a minimum. This treatment administered immediately after you have done the vinegar and warm water wash and the drops of acid on the wound has totally cured many people of rabies. If you have access to a sauna, this is wonderful. If not, you can quickly make a primitive sweat lodge. To make a primitive sweat lodge, you make a dome with tree branches. This sweat lodge does not have to be big, just room, enough room for one or two people to be able to sit around a central hot stone pit. Cover this with quilts, blankets, tarps, or whatever else you have. The doorway is closed with a thick, thick quilt to keep the heat and steam in the sweat lodge. Make a large fire outside of the sweat lodge and heat a great many large rocks. When the rocks are super hot, shove them into the center of the sweat lodge and pour a small quantity of water on the hot stones to create steam. Keep heating rocks outside and transferring them to the interior of the sweat lodge and applying water until it is very hot. Have the rabies, snake bite, or venomous insect patients sit in this sweat lodge until they sweat rivers. Offer them cool herb teas to drink. The key thing is to make them sweat profusely. After the sauna, apply a poultice made of granulated slippery elm with a teaspoon each of powdered gold seal, myrrh, and lobelia, mixed with enough hot water to make a paste. Make the poultice large enough to cover the entire wound and change it every four hours. A poultice of burdock is also good for rabbit animal bites. Now, poultices are one of the safest ways to use herbs and other rem remedies on the skin. They provide the benefits of the herbs but aren't as concentrated as essential oils or tinctures. A poultice is basically a paste made of herbs, clays, activated charcoal, salts, or other beneficial substances that are wrapped in a piece of cloth, such as an old t-shirt material or cheesecloth, and placed on the skin. The poultice is left on for several hours at a time and changed several times a day. This can be done with fresh or dried herbs or other beneficial substances. The benefits is that the body gets constant contact with all the beneficial parts of the herb or plants for an extended period of time. Make the patient throw up to clean out the stomach and then give several enemas to clean out the colon. After the colon is as clean as you can get it, have them take an enema of lobelia tea using one teaspoonful of lobelia to a cup of boiling water. Steep 20 minutes, strain, and use warm, not hot, and inject a half cupful at a time. Get the patient to retain the enema as long as possible. For an internal tonic, take a compound of the following. One teaspoon each of golden seal, gentian, myrrh, lobelia, and one-eighth teaspoon of cayenne. Steep in one quart of boiling water for a half hour. Take a swallow every hour. It is better to take the herbs and compound as given, but in case you cannot get them all, use any one, two, or three that you can get. This treatment has been very successful in rabid dog bites, snake bites, or insect bites when the treatment was strictly followed. If the patient becomes nauseated or weakened, give the following herbs, skullcap, black cohosh, valerian, gentian and angelica. Use equal parts, mix thoroughly together, adding a little cayenne and then making it into a tea by using a teaspoon of the combined herbs to a cup of boiling water that you let steep for five minutes. If you don't have all the herbs, just use what you've got. All poisonous insect bites and snake bites should be lanced. You need to make them bleed. It is If this is not possible, the bite should be sucked by someone who does not have any sores of any nature in the mouth, but bleeding is better. A tea made of plantain leaves is very effective in cleansing for a wash, or a poultice made of the plantain leaves is also very good. Another par very powerful cure is to take the bark from the root of the ash tree and boil it into a strong decoction and drink freely. 
a teacup full three times a day. This is said to be a very potent cure. A decoction is similar to a tea, except that the root is boiled for 10 minutes, then allowed to sit for 10 to 12 hours. It is then reheated, not boiled, and strained and then drunk. After the initial critical stage is handled, the patient then needs lots of water and fluids and plenty of rest to fully recuperate. Well, that's it for now. Stay up to date with my latest videos. Make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscription button right below this video. Take care.